Warren Moon. Warren Moon, I don't, I don't see as much as a gunslinger. Warren Moon has to be considered in that list. Yeah, no. Just in the terms that I look at it, you know, as a gunslinger, no. I think that's right about where he belongs. There's a guy through for 35 miles over the course of his career. It's a career that spanned over 20 years and two different leagues. He's thrown for more yards as a professional football player than any quarterback. Moon back to pass. Drawing for Tony Jones. No one will ever understand how great this guy was. I think the legend just grew. He was pretty much screwed in coming to the National Football League. Warren Moon was a guy that had to go to Canada to win five straight Grey Cups before he got a chance to play. Warren looks and lobs it, got it complete. The time that he had to spend in the Canadian Football League were kind of wasted years. When he came in, there were a lot of coaches, scouts, general managers who thought, you can't play quarterback in this league. We'll make you a wide receiver. I don't want you to think I can play this position. Because we're going to switch the brother to the receiver. <laughs> and it was just pretty much a foregone conclusion that quarterback was not in my future in the National Football League. But changing positions was. He was rowing upstream for a long time before finally he had people in his boat rowing in the same direction. His first three years, the Oilers, they were terrible. That's stupid football. I don't want him hit. So the time they got good in 1987, he'd already played eight years of professional football. Brennan Shute made him a gunslinger, compiled all kinds of guard statistics. The Houston Oilers have finally found an offense for Warren Moon. Go! It's called the run and shoot. The run and shoot offense with Warren Moon just slinging the ball all over the place. Moon can gun down his high-flying receivers from anywhere on the field. And he always seems to be quick on the draw. Their offense was as prolific as any in the NFL. Moon to throw for the shotgun. Deep down the middle for Jeffries. He's got the 30. He is going to score. There might not have been a better pure passer than Warren Moon. Moon, looking deep down the middle, has the man, touchdown! So tired. Warren Moon threw as pretty a pass as you'll ever see. Another perfect pass by Warren Moon. Warren Moon had the spiral that just screwed right into a receiver's hands. You don't see many guys bobbling his pass. Back goes Warren Moon. Wow, could he throw the football. He had a game in 1990 in Kansas City in the rain, in the cold, in which he threw for the second most yards in history. Some days you wake up and it's just your day. Warren Moon came out and threw the ball for 585 yards or something against us. Back to pass, Moon looks right, looks left. He's hit. He breaks the tackle, goes down the middle, caught on a leap by Jeffrey. I was broadcasting that game. It was amazing how well he did. The fact was, I looked on defense for Kansas City. They had six guys of the 11 people out there that had gone to the Pro Bowl. I haven't seen a performance like this in a long, long time. And believe me, this is against a pretty good team. I called Sid Gilman, and he watched that game, and he told me it was the greatest performance he'd ever seen a quarterback have. That's why he's in the Hall of Fame. He was one of the great passers ever. And I think he deserves a place in our top ten. When you feel strong, you think strong, and uh, you can stand in the pocket stronger. Just that little quarter, half a second might be all it takes to complete a big play. Warren Moon withstood the hits, both physically and mentally. By 1987, he built up the strength to turn a weak Oilers franchise into a contender. The finishing touches to the team's turnaround were within his fingertips. When he would throw the ball, and you would literally hear this sound come off his fingers. Almost ripping the leather on the, uh, the football as it spun. Getting that precise sound required perfect nails. Warren's more particular about his fingernails than a woman. My fingernails had to be the right length for me to throw the football the way I wanted to, the way, the way I felt comfortable. And uh, when my length was right, my ball spun as well as anybody who's ever played the game. Prettiest ball I've ever seen. It was a very tight spiral. I think any receiver probably would second that. If he was playing right now today, he still can throw the best spiral of all time. Number six undrafted player of all time, Warren Moon. He was drafted, wasn't he? Warren Moon wasn't drafted? Nope. Wow. It really is a joke that he wasn't drafted. He was 
pretty much screwed to think that he was passed over back in the days when there were a lot of rounds in the draft. It's pretty amazing. Who were the guys that said he wasn't good enough to play in the NFL? We should line those people up and throw tomatoes at him. Can you imagine? Warren Moon might have gone out and sold insurance or taught school or started a business, all worthwhile careers, but this is a Hall of Fame quarterback that nobody wanted. Back then, you know, black quarterbacks didn't get a shot in the NFL. Prototypical size, cannon arm, threw for a million yards in college. The Huskies can also move the football in the air with senior quarterback Warren Moon. But his skin tone's a little bit too dark. He can't play quarterback for us. How absurd is this? Well, what I was told was that I didn't have the arm strength, that I was too short, and that I didn't come out of a pro-style offense. Warren Moon was a pro-style passer even at Hamilton High School, certainly at the University of Washington, led them to the Rose Bowl. They're going to back off and rush forward as Moon fires the ball. Touchdown! Yes, sir! Warren Moon at Washington moved around a lot, threw the ball on the run. In 1978, that was not seen as necessary to play quarterback in the NFL. He had mobile, agile quarterback. He obviously can't think. By all rights, in the modern era, Warren Moon would have probably gone number one overall. And I respect the fact that Warren Moon said, yes, I am a quarterback. If you won't give me a shot, I'll go somewhere where I will get a shot. And he had to go up to Canada to prove himself. He went to Canada, was beyond prolific. Moon, he steps up and fires. Tom Scott is wide open. Touchdown. The number six undrafted player of all time shocked everyone when he led the Edmonton Eskimos to five straight Grey Cup titles. You know, he might be able to play a little bit. He made the NFL sit up and take notice. I'm a quarterback. Give me a shot. In 1984, Moon signed as a free agent with the Houston Oilers. Houston actually paid him the biggest contract in history, $5.5 million. Not bad for a guy that was never drafted. Yeah, you know, he had already proven himself, but he had to get it done in the NFL, and he did. From the very beginning, Moon was able to confirm that his reputation wasn't made up, dreamed up, or overblown. Over a 17-year career, our number six undrafted player proved he could do everything the experts said he couldn't. A classic leader. Hold up, hold up. Let's take one down, all right? Let's, let's put one all together and let's take one down. Wow, could he throw the football. The way it comes through behind the ear, I mean, it's the tightest spiral you can see. Warren Moon is putting on a clinic here today. There's a guy who threw for 35 miles. And Warren Moon has been so sharp on that deep pass today, it's almost scary. Warren Moon is one of the guys who goes way beyond statistics. Warren Moon erased the terminology black quarterback from the game. We're talking about the first black quarterback to get into the Hall of Fame. Not only played this game not for just myself, not for just my teammates. I had a responsibility to play the game for my people.